the cinema judge. Hello and welcome to the Cinema Judge. To all my regulars out there, thanks for coming back. Now, if you're new to the show, let me just briefly tell you what we're about here. We love movies. We like sharing movies. I give you the information and you make up your own mind. That's what we do here. We're not here to cry, criticize, and complain about Hollywood. That's not what we do here. I just want to share movies with you. Consider this a movie oasis. A place just to get away from all your life's problems for whether it be a half hour, 45 minutes. The world's ugly out there sometimes. You know what? We just need an escape. And that's what I want to do here and not have me tell you or try to tell you not to see a movie or even to see a movie. I will just give you the evidence and you make up your own mind. That's what I like to do. Because in the end, any movie is somebody's favorite movie. Who am I to tell you not to see a movie? Nope. I just give you the evidence, and you make up your own mind. Now, approaching the bench today, we have the latest Marvel installment of Thor, Love and Thunder, directed by Taika Waititi. This guy is mad crazy great. This guy can write, produce, act. There's nothing he can't do. You just look at his whole arsenal of what he's done. Mind-blowing. From Jojo Rabbit to things of what we do in the dark. And I could go on and on. This guy is just a beast. And if rumor is true, he's also working on a future Star Wars, you know, feature. Now that, try to wrap your head around that. If you know anything about this guy, having him in the Star Wars universe, I can imagine what he'll do to that in a great way. I mean, it's already a great franchise, don't get me wrong. But having this fresh, new, creative mind working on a Star Wars film... I can't wait. I hope it comes true because he'll set a whole different tone than what we've that we're used to. So fingers crossed that he will be making a Star Wars film soon. But now going back to this film, look at this cast. Chris Hemsworth, Natalie Portman, Christian Bale, Russell Crowe. And that's just the tip of the iceberg. This movie is loaded with talent. And I'm not going to give some of them away. There's there's a few guest appearances. So I'm not going to mess that up for you. But this is just one huge cast. But now, let me give you a brief summary of what this movie's about. In this latest installment of Thor, Thor enlists the help of Valkyrie, Korg, and ex-girlfriend Jane Foster to fight Gore, the God Butcher, who intends to make the gods extinct. In this movie, it is so fun. But that's that's a gist of it. And there's a lot more going on than just that. But that's just a simple tagline. And just real quick before we move on, I just want to give a couple quick shout-outs before we start. To Andrea and Ava, it was great seeing you. I hope you had a great vacation. And Chani from Minnesota Oncology, you are fantastic. And thank you for taking care of my people. Your work is greatly appreciated. So without further ado, here's a trailer for Thor. Love and Thunder. Kids, get the popcorn now. Let me tell you the story of the space viking, Thor Odinson. He was no ordinary man. He was a god. After saving planet Earth for the 500th time, Thor set off on a new journey. Well, he got in shape. He went from dad bod to god bod. And after all that... Mjolnir. He reclaimed his title as the one and only Thor. Oh, spoke too soon. Jane? The old ex-girlfriend. What's it been like? Three, four years? <laughs> Eight years, seven months and six days. Give or take. Am I uh, sensing feelings? Well, you're right. <laughs> the only ones who gods care about is themselves. So this is my vow. All gods will die. I just want to say that was very, very impressive what you did back there. 
just my first bad guy. You never forget your first. You are not like the other gods of kill. Because I have something worth fighting for. Let's see who you are. I take off your disguise. And flick! Oh! You flicked too hard, damn it! Shall we help him? I mean, eventually. Great. Now, coming up first, we're going to hear from the director, Taika Waititi, from the red carpet. He's going to talk about working with Hemsworth again. To bring Thor into a new story? Always. You know, I think, you know, it's, Chris is Chris. Is Chris. You know, he's one of my best friends. Um, you know, I, I love working with him. I want to work with him forever. Uh, we just have such a great relationship, and, you know, it doesn't matter what character it is, but especially this one, where, like, we, you know, we really, like, worked hard on that last film and made something great. And to be able to do it again and make a really good film again, it's uh, there's a lot of pressure, but we pulled it off. In that he did. They pulled this bad boy off really good. But up next, we're going to hear from Chris Hemsworth, who plays Thor, and he's going to talk a little bit more about Thor's, his headspace, and maybe a little bit, you know, you'll see in this movie, he's a little bit more reflective, And but they do it in such a great way. But this is him talking about that. The reflective nature of Thor, I think... Um Look, all of us, you know, um, self-reflection, we look in the mirror and we think, who are we, who should we we be, who do we want to be? Um, There's a constant question we all have faced, as is Thor. And um, I think what he's learned over the years is to stay true to who he is. And although he wants quieter moments and, and wishes for peace and serenity, you know, the universe calls upon him for his support, you know, and he is in servitude of, of others. And uh, when the call is made, he answers and off he goes. Now, speaking of that, where he's called and goes to where he's needed, we're going to play a clip for you. We have Thor. He walks onto this battlefield and the people who are being attacked walk up to him and they're like, oh man, thanks a lot for showing up. We appreciate it. And he's like, well, better than late than not at all. And then he just kind of, Stands up on his sledge, pulls off his like jacket type thing, and you know starts doing his thing. But the tone—that's what I like to point out about this movie. The tone is so well walked. There's even the guy's reaction to Thor when he says, "Well, better late than not at all." And <laughs> just the guy, oh, 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 oh okay. It, it's hard to you know you'll you'll get what I'm saying when you see it and or hear it. But that's the scene. He's onto the scene. He's all just lighthearted and carefree. And it's like, ah, here I am, doing what I love. I will save the day. Here's a scene from Thor, Love and Thunder. God of Thunder. King Yakan. You have finally joined our fight. Well, they say, better late than not at all. It is very nice. As you know, we used to live in a peaceful oasis. But then our gods were murdered. Murdered? And now our sacred temple has been left unguarded and Hoku's resorts to control of its power. It is our most sacred shrine and he desecrates. Not for long. Uh, King Yakan, tell them what happened here today. Tell them the time that Thor, the ragtag motley crew, misfit desperados, turned the time the battle and etched their names in history. The odds may be against us, but I'll tell you this for free. Here it comes. This ends here and now! No! We're going to hear next from the director, Taika. And he's going to talk about in this film, making him more, Thor that is, more human. Trying to humanize a god, a Viking king. Because that's not easy, because nobody can. But... They try to, and that's what their whole essence here, I think, is, is humanizing him, making him be more like us so we can say, I, I get it. And that's him talking about that. Check it out. 
Well, I think Thor resonates more now with uh, with uh, the, the Ragnarok movie um, that we did, and also now with Love and Thunder because we're giving him more human problems, more relatable problems. Um, you know, let's face it. You can't really relate to a space Viking who's thousands of years old and uh, is basically a zillionaire who lives in space. Uh, so you've got to give these characters uh, things that we've all experienced. And and in this film, I think uh, we can relate to him more than ever, where he's lost, he's trying to find purpose, and uh, he, luckily, by the end of the film, uh, he finds that purpose. And I totally understand what he's talking about here, because for most of us, we're human, we have flaws, we have difficulties, but sometimes when these movies come out, these characters are like totally un- unrelatable, and I realize they try to make them relatable in other aspects, and that's what they're doing here, but that's what I like about Thor, and I think a lot of other people like about Thor, he's a little bit more human-esque, or he's trying to be, and you see that whole process, he's not just this cold-headed or cold-hearted guy who's smug and arrogant all the time, but in this next interview... Chris Hemsworth talks about how and why us, the audience, the, the character of Thor really resonates with us. And, you know, and he, he explains that. Why do I think the character of Thor resonates with audiences around the world? You know, I think because he has evolved over the years, much like all of us, you know. There's a, a growth uh, within each film and a new experience, Um and he has learnt things about himself and changed and matured. Um, And that's the journey we're all on, isn't it? It's a journey of self-discovery. Now, in that same vein about why Thor resonates with us, we're going to hear from Tessa Thompson, who plays Valkyrie, and she's going to talk to a little bit about why. I think Thor, I mean, I guess uh, I only learned this recently, that Thor has the most standalone movies of anyone in the Marvel Cinematic Universe, which means he, he really connects with audiences. And I think I think he connects with audiences because he's the kind of guy you want to be, but he's also a kind of guy that feels relatable in, in, in some weird way. I mean, when we first met him early on, he was sort of this fish out of water, which I think we all can feel as humans. Um, and then he's just kind of like a goofy, lovable guy that I feel like you kind of want to sit down and, and hang out with. He's he's valuable. He's not perfect, but he has a has a big heart and he's always trying. And I think that's something that we that we all can sort of know and understand and love. Now, when asked the same question, Natalie Portman responds to why Thor resonates with all of us. And once again, Natalie Portman plays Jane Foster, the ex-girlfriend of Thor. I think Thor resonates because Chris Hemsworth is just someone that you're interested in in watching and seeing grow over the years. I mean, he's just he's just so charismatic and such a good actor and and such a good sense of humor too. Like you're just completely entertained all the time. Taika Waititi is up next, and he's going to talk about the character Jane Foster and how her character is now evolving also. Uh, so Natalie Portman is now back in the MCU. She's back in the Thor franchise and in a bigger, better, bolder way. And it's, it's extremely exciting because she's now the mighty Thor. Um, she's no longer Thor's girlfriend, the scientist in Albuquerque. She's now the mighty Thor who has the hammer and she's got the cape and the armor and she can fly and she can... She's wielding Mjolnir and she can harness lightning. I mean, she's an incredible character, super strong, and it's great to see Natalie. It's great to see a female superhero all the time. It's great, and but see one so powerful and and really dominating a lot of the the storyline and really being a you know an equal presence with uh, Thor is a great thing to see. Chris Hemsworth is up next, and he's going to talk about Natalie Portman playing the character Jane Foster in the evolution of her character and how he reacts to it. And by the way, how he reacts to it in the, in the movie is quite funny, but here he is talking about that. And Natalie Portman is back and this time as the mighty Thor, which, you know, I mean, imagine seeing your ex-girlfriend um, where, where there was the untold story, unfinished business. There was love there that was never truly experienced. Um, all of that comes flooding into Thor's um, being an experience in that moment. And I think he's intimidated. I think he's he's in wonder and fascination, but most of all, he's impressed and, uh, 
and he's in love when he sees her. Natalie Portman did the most amazing job uh, playing the Mighty Thor, and I can't wait for people to see it. Natalie Portman is up next, and she's going to talk a little bit more about her character. I think that, um, you know, Jane has the perspective of, you know, her own life challenges, and I think that, you know, it gives her definitely a different way of interacting with Thor. Um, and also, I think, reuniting after knowing someone 10 years ago and having had this history, you know, we, we revisit those relationships in different ways when we have the perspective of time, too. Now, coming up next, we're going to play an interview with the director, and he's going to talk about how and when Thor and Jane meet, and they meet on the battlefield, and this is him talking about that. But then immediately after that, we're just going to go right into the clip. And in this clip, there's a big battle scene going on in a, in a small town. Because what happened was this. Christian Bale's character, Gore, has sent all these creatures to this town to draw out these superheroes so he could take them out. So there they are fighting, doing their thing. And then all of a sudden, he sees his hammer and he calls out for it. And it flies by and it, bam! lands in Jane's hand. and But he doesn't know what it's her at first. He's just kind of looking at her like, you know, what's, what's going on? And then she releases all these shards from the hammer and takes out all these creatures, just whap, 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 whap. It's wonderfully shot. It's a cool scene. But that's how he first meets her again on the battlefield. Yeah, so when Thor, when Thor and Val, when when Thor and Jane meet after years of being apart and years of not talking, um, she's on the battlefield and she's dressed as the mighty Thor and she's got her powers and she's doing amazing things with the hammer. She can wield the hammer in a way that Thor never could. And Thor's reaction, uh, apart from the surprise and the shock at seeing someone holding his hammer, is really more um, focused on that's his ex-girlfriend and he hasn't seen her for a long time, and maybe this is the thing he's been looking for to fill that hole in his life, the thing that might give him purpose. We only hit one. Now we're... Natalie Portman is up next, and she says what I've been saying this whole time, but I didn't make it up. I got it from her, so I was just borrowing her words. But she explains how the director was able to take all these elements of different genres and all these things and put them together to make a cohesive movie. This is her explaining it better. I think that... Um Taika was able to create this very, very particular um, genre that was able to mix things that you never could imagine would mix, like this really wacky out there humor with really heartfelt emotional depth to, you know, romance to action to even horror elements. And he just has a kind of um, imagination and sensibility that makes all of that work together. And it's amazing. Now, as an example for that, we're going to play a clip for you. Now, in this scene, Thor's standing in this room and there's all these people gathered around. And he's standing there with his buddy, Korg. And he's, Korg's like, oh, that's your ex-girlfriend hanging out with your ex-hammer. That must be kind of a buzzkill. And Thor's just like, yep, that's that's the way it is. But then, you know, other things, they say it better, but there's <laughs> a thing that, that goes down. But then Thor kind of like puts out his hand next to his side and he, he tries to conjure up the hammer to come back to him. He's like, come on, come back to me. 
trying to like, <laughs> you know, get it back. And she's there just talking to people, spinning it like, woo do 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 do. And then they have a side shot. And then you see the thing that he's been using slide slowly up next to him. And he's like, hey, there you are. It, I, it's such a fun scene. Check it out. So that's the ex-girlfriend, is it? The old ex-girlfriend. Judy Foster. Jane Foster. The one that got away. The one that got away. That means escaped. Yeah. Yeah. Must be hard for you to see your ex-girlfriend and your ex-hammer hanging out and getting on so well. What you up to, bro? Go to daddy. Go. No, no. just calling you now kill me up next we're going to play a wonderful interview with tessa thompson who plays valkyrie i love this interview she's just talking about how much she enjoys working with chris hemsworth but not just as an actor but as a person how she knows his family and everything like that it's just wonderful just to hear this interview but then immediately after that we're going to also hear from natalie portman talking about chris hemsworth and how you know about his warmth and Stuff like that. These are just coo- two cool interviews. Check it out. You know, working with Chris Hemsworth is like a, is like a warm fire, is like an afternoon picnic. It's like a walk in the park. It's like a cup of tea. It's like, <laughs> no, I don't know. I, I love Chris. I really like Chris. I love working with Chris. Chris and I like to make fun of each other. We like to make each other laugh. Um, our families are bonded now. Our parents like each other. I, I think we'll just merge the Thompsons and the Hem, Hemsworth, the, the Hems Tomps, the Tomps, the Tompsworths, I think is what we're aiming for. I love his wife. I love his children. He has donkeys. I like them too. And, um, and I just want to, ta- I just want to hang on his cape, you know? both literally and figuratively, um, because look, he's so cool. Chris is just so incredible um, because he's 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 the hardest working person um, I've met and he's so talented and he's so kind. He's just like always good to everyone, always um, pro- so professional, so funny and just like really it's it's remarkable when you see someone who is just a better version of who he already started as a great person and just has only become more so over the years, um, despite, you know, the trappings of, of all the success he's had. Um, it's it's only, you know, only deepened his his work and his personality. And I love this next interview from Tessa Thompson, who plays Valkyrie. And I love how she reacts to people loving her character. She's almost perplexed and confused, like, wow, that's so great. Thanks for liking my character. That's wonderful. And then she talks a little bit more about her character. Why? I don't know. That is, I do, that's cool. If fans love Valkyrie a lot, that is cool. And I don't know why. But I love it, and thank you for loving her. I think she's fantastic, Um, and... You know, I think she's she's again sort of like Thor. I think she's imperfect, but I think she has a really really good heart, and she's a, a lovable person. Um, and I think when you first meet her, especially, you really want her to love herself. And I think that's sometimes something that you can feel endeared to in a person, kind of when they don't actually know how great they are, and and when they begin to understand that and love that, they become even better people. And I think that's what you want for Valkyrie. Um, and for me, I, I just can't believe I'm, I'm, I feel so incredibly lucky to get to make these, these movies. Like every day when I show up to make these movies, I, I kind of really and truly feel like I'm pinching myself. And so I think that makes me just want to be better and, and serve the character more and uh, not let the fans down and not let my co-stars down. And, and so it's just been a pleasure to get to do that. Like I said, great interview. Now coming up next, we'll hear from Natalie Portman. And she's going to talk about Tessa Thompson, about her, her character, and the cool history that they have together. Because in real life, they worked on another film together. 
And just this is her talking about that. Well, Tessa's Valkyrie is is probably my favorite uh, of all the superheroes, and I like wish she. I, I wish I'm looking forward to her whole film. Um, and it was extraordinary to get to work together because we had worked together on Annihilation right before she did Thor Ragnarok, and we stayed friends and and like have done so much together um, personally and then to come to set together and have a friend there already and have that rapport and have that familiarity was was extraordinary and then of course to work alongside her in her her brilliance and her humor and her creativity was was so fun I mean our scenes together are like my favorites in the in the film and I feel like you know my my love for her is 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 you know eternal. <laughs> that was Natalie talking about Tessa. Up next, we have Tessa talking about Natalie. Well, working with Natalie is such a joy. We had made a film together many years ago. It was a very different film, but also a film that, um, you know, had a lot of women and, and powerful women working on an assignment together. And she and I, during that time, were talking about how rare it is that we all get to work together, that typically there might be one or two women on a movie, if you're even lucky to have two. Um, and, you know, we're friends outside of making movies together. And so I think getting to do this. And funnily, when we made that movie together many years ago, I was about to come and do Thor Ragnarok and so I was training for that and I was asking her well, what's it like working on Marvel movies like do you have any tips and she was like yeah but I don't know I was never a superhero and so then for her to come in and now be a superhero and she's like got any tips and I'm like this is so funny it's like it, it felt like we really came full circle and and also to get to like be in the gym together and and getting strong together and getting to make this film is really such a dream come true and and um, it was so fun to get to watch her inhabit the the, the the spirit of Mighty Thor. We're going to play another scene for you. Now, in this scene, we have Thor, we have Portman, we have Tessa. They're all standing in this room, and they're all thinking about, okay, we got to get this bad guy. And then Portman's character goes, okay, I'm going to go take care of this. She, she walks to the center of the room and says, oh, I'm going to, we're going to the place of darkness. I'm going to bring the rainbow. You know, she shoots up in the air, and then there's this fun banter between Thor and and Valkyrie talk about wow what, what what how many catchphrases does she have and then they kind of joke about that she comes back down and then they discuss it with each other and they go well you know it goes from there but here's a scene from Thor Love and Thunder they're in the shadow realm how do you know the atmosphere there has a darkness like no other it's as if color fears to tread it's unmistakable well then if it's color we need let's bring the rainbow Bring the rainbow, is that a catchphrase or something? She's only been a Thor for a minute. I mean, saving lives, she's quite good at, but the rest of it, she needs work. How many catchphrases have there been? A lot. Yep, jump the gun. But hang on, he moves through shadows and he's going to the shadow realm. It seems like that's where he's going to be the most powerful. You're right, we can't just go marching in there. It could be a trap. Are you thinking what I think you're thinking? I'm thinking it. What are we thinking? Thinking what? I'm thinking it too. Omnipotent City. City. Mm. We're going to hear next from Tessa Thompson, who plays Valkyrie. And she's going to talk a little bit more about her character. In the beginning of the film, she's more of a almost ambassador because it's almost a tourist tourist spot where people come to this town and take pictures and all that stuff. And she loves doing it because, you know, she likes, you know, her people. But there is that part of her who misses the battle, miss, misses that whole action. And this is her talking about that. So we find King, you know, we find Valkyrie at the beginning of this film as, as King of New Asgard. And, and she's so proud to be that because she loves her people so intensely. But, you know, she has spent her whole life, which represents thousands and thousands of years, as a career soldier and being a part of, um, you know, a, a group and a, a cistern of fighters. And I think she's really missing that. She's missing a sense of adventure. She's missing that camaraderie. Um, and what is exciting is she kind of finds that again in the adventure of Thor, Love and Thunder, and the bad guy that they have to beat um, in, in Gore, the God Butcher. But she also finds sisterhood in in Mighty Thor. And um, and that's really satisfying. And then I think you get to see her really figure out the kind of king that she wants to be. And, and I really think that she's a, she's a great king. And she plays that character to a T. And I guess, my prediction is she'll have her own film coming up here eventually. Because she's that good. She's very talented. 
and the character is very great. But up next, we're going to hear from three of the actors talking about what I've been talking about this whole time, the incredible talent of director Taika Waititi. We're first going to hear from Natalie Portman, then Chris Hemsworth, and finally Tessa Thompson. And they're all going to be saying the same thing, the incredible talent of this director. Taika is so fun. He makes every moment like he's just committed to always being spontaneous, always creating a, a fun, creative environment. And um, it's it's just a completely different experience to be on his set. And he's also very kind. Like his humor is really extraordinary because it's never at anyone's expense um, ever. And he it's just creates a very safe environment to try anything uh, because you know like he's he's always like embracing. Yeah, Taika Waititi, you know, since Ragnarok really changed the game. And uh, both he and I discussed this at length about doing something very different and something unique. And um, he continues to, to push the envelope and raise the bar and and keep audiences guessing, keep them on their toes, you know. He, he's collaborative and fun and chaotic and exciting and uh, that's what this film is you know and it embodies the most adventurous spirit um, that is that is needed to be a Marvel Cinematic Universe film and picture. Working with director Taika Waititi is uh, like a tight it's like a tightrope it's like a Russian roulette it's like a word game it's like Scrabble it's like organized chaos. It is like um, theater. And it is like an amusement park. It's very fun and there's lots of music and he's really inventive and lovely and a maniac. And I'm, I feel really grateful that we get to make these films with him because I think they're really weird singular films and I'm not sure that anyone else would make a, a film, you know, like like this, like this one that we made. So I feel really grateful. Now, coming up next, we're going to have a lot of interviews from the red carpet. And I'm always torn what to do here. Should I interrupt every time somebody else comes up next? Or do you prefer the flow where this goes one into another? Because I don't want to get in the way. So th on this particular time, I'm just going to name off the order of some of these people that are going to be at the red carpet, okay? So, first of all, in this set of interviews from the red carpet, you can first hear from the director, then Natalie Portman, Chris Hemsworth, Chris Pratt, Karen Gillian, and Tessa Thompson. That's just a start off from the red carpet. It's amazing. It's like, you know, and it re again, it reinforces like just the idea that we love movies. We love you know larger than life movies, and especially movies that just that are spectacles and like you know and like real escapism so you know and, and but escapism where the characters are relatable and you know they you know the you know, Thor you wouldn't think you'd be able to relate to him but he goes on a journey that we've all experienced it's like such a joy to be part of it it's such a fun it was such a fun movie to make and i think you can really tell on screen that everyone's like having a great time and i think audiences will too it's incredible. I mean, it's a dream. I, I look at, uh, you know, when I first started acting 20 years ago and thought about my ideal idea or dream of a career, and this is well and above all of that. And, and I've done uh, eight films now, I think, as Thor, and each time it gets more and more exciting, and this was no exception. It was amazing. This never gets old. This never gets old. There's a ton of fans lined up all up and down the street. There's people dressed as Star-Lord and Thor and Gamora and Nebula and... Just love this fandom. It's been an extraordinary eight plus, almost ten years of, of doing this, and it just never gets old. We're having a great time. I'm so excited. We're bringing a, a new Thor to the screen, and by say we, uh, you know, the Guardians are a, a small part in this extraordinary new movie, Love and Thunder. Go check it out. Uh, it's it's opening up, and, and you're gonna love it. There's truly nothing like watching a film like this, surrounded by fans and people who love. Uh, the movie going experience. There's nothing like seeing it on a big screen. Tonight's going to be a very, very special night. I'm, I'm absolutely looking forward to getting in there, watching the movie, seeing it, and, uh, and just listening as people laugh and cry and are moved and gasp in unison. It's a shared communal experience, and man, I love the movies. I love the movies. Ah, that's, that's one of the best parts of being in these films is that we get to kind of meet up a year later and celebrate it in such an extraordinary way. Like they shut down Hollywood Boulevard. It's like such a big 
thing and we get to like get dressed up for a night um, and so it's it's really fun it's really cool I you know when I first started playing this character in the first Guardians film I never thought that I would be in so many Marvel movies let alone a Thor movie I'm like wow this is like the gift that keeps on giving and it's really cool to see that crossover I think it's a really really funny crossover of characters Ah, it's really cool. It's really, really cool to sit in and watch these things with a live audience for the first time because you get you get the immediate reactions. You feel the energy of the room and and these films, people just love them. They're beloved. Um, and so to, to kind of get to experience it with the audience is a really special thing that we don't take for granted. We find Valkyrie as a new king of New Asgard and uh, she mostly is enjoying the title so much. She's always um, protected her kingdom uh, sort of as a, a warrior before and now so this is sort of a change of identity for her she loves being king except she's having a tough time with bureaucracy she's sort of itching for mystery and adventure again and thankfully she gets it it was amazing it's like coming back and, and being with family and also so many of our cast members had their family had their kids I mean look Tyka's kids are here now on the carpet and they're also in the movie so it really felt familial and just like an incredible to be reunited. It was great. This is the second time Natalie and I have worked together. We made a film called Annihilation years ago and like became friends then, stayed friends. So it really felt like getting back together with a good friend of yours. I think because Chris is a really lovable guy. I think he he's really relatable, even though he like looks superhuman, <laughs> both in real life and in these movies. I think he has a lot of heart and soul and just really kind, and I think you can sort of sense that. We're going to hear next from Pom Clementif, who plays Mantis, and Kieran Dyer, who plays Axel both from the red carpet premiere. I'm very excited. I haven't seen the movie yet, so I'm like you guys, I can't wait to discover it. I right, saw so it it was very special because we we shot the movie right like in the middle of the pandemic in Sydney, so the world was all uh, shut down and we were like able to to play these characters uh, in the sunshine and we're like very lucky to do that. I think they're gonna laugh a lot, but they're gonna be moved a lot too. And there is like, yeah, there's like a lot of like, there, uh, there's a beautiful love story between, you know, the two main characters. I can't say more, but you know. Incredible, I mean, it's, I can't believe it. I mean, I grew up watching Marvel movies when I was younger. I love Thor Ragnarok and it's so great to be here. Oh my gosh, it was crazy. It was, it was a bit surreal at the time. I didn't really believe it, I guess. But um, yeah, it was amazing when I got to Australia as well and I met Chris and I met Taika and Tessa, it was amazing. I learned so much from them, I mean they're amazing actors, they've been acting for a long time so it was great to just be able to see how they work and it was amazing. Chris, yeah, he's amazing what he does, he's really good at comedy and drama and he's just a really great actor in general and even an incredible person as well. I was a huge fan of Marvel, I mean if I had to pick my favourite superhero I'd probably say Thor or Black Widow. Now coming up next from the red carpet, we're going to hear from Natalie Portman. And she's going to talk a little bit more about her character. And I'm not going to give anything away from what she says, but she does face other challenges other than the bad guys. It's so lucky to get to come back now, especially with um, Jane getting to become the mighty Thor, to have the superhero aspect of her as well as the... Um, you know, human vulnerable side of her um, really allowed for an incredible character. We find Jane um, still a very committed astrophysicist, but facing some real life challenges. And of course, this ability to now ha be worthy enough to wield the hammer Mjolnir um, and become the, the mighty Thor allows her to, you know, have kind of a new lease on life. Now coming up next, we're going to hear from the director, also from the red carpet, talking about wanting more women in these kind of roles. We need more women in film, we need more women in superhero films, and it's, it's, it's great for young girls to see, uh, to see women in, 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 you know, playing characters in positions of power and who are powerful, but also it's very important for young boys to see this as well. And that's pretty important. Everybody needs fair representation in films, you know, because we all know for so long it's been the same tropes, same situations, same characters over and over again. Finally, other voices are being heard. Up next, we're going to hear from Natalie Portman. And she kind of repeats what was said earlier in the show about all the different genres put into this film. 
but yet it, it works. Taika has this unreal ability to um, mix like really out there comedy with really heartfelt emotion with all of the kind of classic uh, action of, the, of these kinds of films and also romance and it's like none of it should work together and yet all of it does and it's a coherent whole and it's super entertaining so I, I don't know anyone else who could who could do that besides him and I felt lucky to be along for the journey. We're going to hear three more interviews with the director. The first two are from the world premiere. The last one is from Australia and he sums everything up pretty well. We've been stuck at home, we've been watching films on our phones, you know, it's time to get back in the cinemas. It's time, you know, it's time to celebrate being able to like be around strangers in a big dark room seeing films on a giant giant screen. I always make films I want uh, I want people to laugh and cry. So I want it to be like entertainment, fun and adventure, but also I want it to be emotional. Look, I, I, yeah, I'm biased. I, I absolutely think this is the best. One of the more, this is the best, uh, I mean, obviously the best Marvel film I've made. Um, I didn't know if we would be able to top Ragnarok, and I think we did. You know, we made something I think, more emotional, yes. more adventurous, more exciting, and yeah, I'm, I'm very proud. I couldn't agree with him anymore. He nailed this movie. He could balance drama, action, suspense, romance, a little bit of terror. He knows how to weave all these objects together to make a cohesive, fun movie. And that's the key, fun. You, you go to his kind of movies, and you won't go to Marvel movies and have fun, or any movie, but when you go to his kind of films, you're going to have fun. You're going to feel things. You're going to have a full experience. And that's what sets him apart from so many directors. He could integrate all these things into one movie and this one was considerably short compared to all other Marvel movies. I think this was the shortest one they've ever made yet. Allegedly, and I might have said this earlier, they have like they had like a four hour cut. It's even more bonkers. That would be so cool one day if they release that when they do like the Blu-ray or whatever they do. Give us the total uncut version. Cause as I would love to know what the version was of the director himself. What did he, when he first just threw it out there and said, this is what I want. For me as a movie buff, I would eat that stuff up. So just throwing it out there to the universe. If you ever want to do that, oh kind sir, us people out here in movie land would love it. It's not too long for us. We'll give us some popcorn and we're set. And since we're talking about this great director, look at his body of work. If you ever have time, Check out, I'm just going to name a couple here. First of all, Jojo Rabbit. Back in 2019, directed it, produced it, starred in it. And what I talked about earlier about being able to weave drama, comedy, and all those all those things that make a movie great. He was able to make a World War II movie with Hitler in it and made it funny. Incredibly heart-jerking. Just pulls that emotional, all beyond Get Out and just even something as simple as a shoe, and I'm not going to give anything away by that really, but just a shoe shot can just just make you so emotional. He's also involved in What We Do in the Shadows, and he does great work in Our Flag Means Death. It's from 2022. He plays Blackbeard. Incredible. This guy has great timing and everything. Just do yourself a favor. Check out some of his work. Like I said, from Jojo Rabbit and on. He's just, I can't wait to see what he does in the future. And if you're interested in Marvel, the comics, that whole world, see, I just do movies here. That's my jam. But a good friend of mine, he has a podcast that deals with comics and stuff in this world before they come a movie. Check out Crazy Comics and Stories Podcast. That's Cray as a K-R-A-Y space Z space comics and stories podcast this guy he's owned a couple comic book stores in the past he reads constantly these things and him and his buddy put out a great show and they they go all into that kind of stuff you know like when i need answers about stuff i go to him cuz he knows that comic world and it's he's so full of you know, information so if, if that's your jam check out his podcast i think you'll really enjoy it well, I hope you enjoyed our in-depth look at Thor, 
Love and Thunder. In case you had no clue by now, I really enjoyed this film. It has it all. I had a blast. Now, if you have any questions, comments, concerns, any way to improve the show, please feel free to let me know. Cinemajudge at Hotmail.com Because I can't grow if I don't know. If you have some good constructive input, I'm more than happy to listen. Because I want you to keep coming back. That's what I do this for. If I could do better, I want to do better. So feel free to let me know. Or even if you just want to stop in and say, hey, I like the show or I listen every week. Cinemajudge at Hotmail.com But if you're interested in watching the TV version of this, go to Bloomington, Minnesota's webpage. That's BLM as in Bloomington dot MN backward slash BTV dash shows. And just go to the top of the screen there, type in Cinema Judge, and a whole bunch of shows will show up. In this particular episode, on the TV version of it, I have some red carpet um, scenery that you don't, it can't have in the podcast, or you know, it would just be people yelling and screaming. But in that footage, you know, you see them walking around with their fancy outfits and waving at people. So if you're interested in all those kind of things, or you know, seeing the sh- the scenes or the interviews in this show, it's right there for you. But now it's shout out time. I love this part of the show. For all you around the world, I hope my voice finds you well. For all of you listening in your car, at home, at work, just sitting around, I'm glad to be your co-pilot in talking movies, because that's what I love to do, sharing movies with you. Every time I do this show and I see people who listen, I just can't help but wonder, wherever, whenever, or whatever you're doing, I am so grateful, and this is for you. To all my listeners from the United States, Ireland, Germany, Philippines, France, Mexico, South Korea, Minneapolis, Minnesota, St. Paul, Minnesota, Las Vegas, Nevada. Thanks so much, ladies, for listening. I really appreciate it. Chaska, Minnesota, Detroit, Michigan, Pasadena, California, Littleton, Colorado, Holyoke, Mass, Cottage Grove, Minnesota, Bergenfield, New Jersey. So many of you out there listen every solitary week. And you have no idea what that means to me. Taking time out of your life to listen to this show on a regular basis, I truly tip my cap to you. Because when I'm sitting here in the basement talking just to myself, sometimes I just try to focus on maybe one person. You know, because, you know, I, I'm not a group guy. I always freak out. I freak out doing this anyway. But I really freak out if there's just a group of people. I'm more of a one on one kind of guy. So when I get really freaked out sometimes, I just try to focus maybe on one city, one state, whatever it is, and say, I'm just talking to this individual. Because the whole big picture just gets me all freaked out. All of you who listen regularly, I am so indebted to you. My constant listeners in Dublin, Frankfurt M. Maine Hess, you guys are always there for me. Thanks for listening. Thanks for sharing. In the Vow City, I don't know if I said that right or not, DeVale City, province of DeVale del Sur. Thank you. And every one of you who shares this with your friends or likes it, five stars it, everything helps. And thank you for doing that. Or some of you even listened to more than once. And I that just means a lot. Every solitary one of you, thank you. Now this week's bourbon shout-out goes out to Marie, Michelle, Roxanne, and Roseanne. I was able to hang out with you ladies before you we went to on your vacation, it was a blast hanging out with you. And it was great hearing from you while you were there, just living it up, having a girl's vacation. So to every one of you, thank you and cheers. But now it's the music section. Now this section is about what I was listening to when I was making this. Not the podcast here, because obviously it can't have any noise in the background. Because even like right now, I had to turn off the air conditioner, because whenever that bad boy kicks in, it would create way too much background noise. So I just kill it because we don't need any of that. But I'm making the TV version of this show, which becomes this podcast, I'm cranking tunes in the background. That's what I love to do. My two loves in the world, movies and music. When I can combine them when I'm editing, it just it puts me in my happy place. And with this movie, if you've seen it, and even if you haven't seen it, even in the trailer, you get a, a hint of... Some great tunes in this movie. They know how to place tunes in here so wonderfully. And there's several GNR songs in the movie. For those who don't know, that's Guns N' Roses. So that being said, I went into it kind of with that headspace. 
So when I was listening, when I was making the TV version of this, of course I had to throw down Appetite for Destruction. That album is darn near perfect. I mean, even when it came out, I remember going, traveling around with my buddies, driving from place to place, party to party, just cranking that album. Well, at the time it was a tape, but I don't think we finished that album this one whole summer because we kept going places back and forth, neither here nor there, just loaded with memories for me. So when I was making this, I was cranking out Appetite for Destruction, and of course I had to throw on Use Your Illusion 1 and 2, because again, there's some stellar tunes on there, and a couple of those songs are in the movie. That was the headspace I was in, and I just kind of kept listening to that stuff over and over, just to get me into the mood of this movie, because this movie has a ton of tunes in it, and it's just well done. Well, that is it. My glass awaits. I'm thirsty. So cheers to you and to the movies. So until next time, be well, be good, and I'm gone. I'm Jeff. Thanks for listening to The Cinema Judge. (laughs) 